Going through a breakup is really hard. I know that because I went through one last year and it was really hard for me. And I had a couple really close friends who did the same thing. They were close with their girlfriends and for different reasons. There's been cheating, like infidelity. There's been people who just kind of grew apart. What I found after watching these people and watching myself is there is a right way to do it. There is a right way to go through a breakup where you will bounce back quickly, just so much faster than you ever expected. And that's what I'm gonna tell you about today. Now let's start with the reason for breakups. Now, sometimes, like I said before, there will be infidelity, there will be lies, there will be cheating, and that's horrible and that sucks. But after that, there's also people that just simply grow apart or just don't like each other anymore. Now, maybe you've been dumped or maybe you're planning on leaving the person you're with. I want to make it clear that regardless as to why this breakup has happened or will happen, you can follow these steps regardless. And so I want to get into this and teach you the survival guide to go through breakups. So the absolute non-negotiable first step is no contact. There is no idea of staying friends or making sure that you follow up in two weeks and see how the other person's doing. There is none of that. You need to accept that when you guys have broken up, she no longer exists. Okay, whatever happens with her or to her does not concern you. It's none of your business. She no longer exists. Now that might sound tough, might sound harsh, but the reality is that you need to allow yourself and your brain an opportunity to get past the stimulus that's causing you the pain. Thinking of her and all that kind of stuff and going through memories in your mind, going through photos, all that kind of stuff, that is absolutely counterproductive. And so the first thing is absolute no contact. If you're the kind of person that thinks, oh, you know, our families are close, maybe one day we'll talk in the future. Okay, maybe you guys can contact, but you're going to at least have a year before that happens, a full year. You need to commit to a year if you really want to get over the whole situation, okay? Now, part of no contact. This also means that you are not going through old text messages and old photos because that instill to your brain, that's still a sense of contacting her and having some sort of stimulation from her. There is no photos, there is no text messages, there's no going through letters, none of that. You don't have to delete everything, that's fine. In my case, I didn't do that. I didn't delete everything, but what I did is I didn't look at a single thing. To this day, I haven't looked at a single thing, not a photo, not a letter. There is no contact. You give your brain the opportunity to get over things without having that stimulus coming back and irritating you. Okay, so let's get into the initial stages and steps right after the breakup happens. That's obviously when it's the most difficult. And so I wanna give you a practical guide and a practical expectation of what's going to happen right when you break up. Now, for the first couple of days, you will be in shock. I think it's fair to assume that the shock lasts for two weeks. That might seem long to some people, might seem short to others, but just accept that for two weeks, you're going to be emotionally turbulent. So what does that mean? That means there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. Now, it's not just going to be downs. Importantly, it's not just going to be downs. There is going to be times where you feel like, wow, I'm over this. It's been eight, nine days and I'm over this. I'm good. But you wake up on that 10th, 11th day and you feel like garbage. You feel like not only do I miss this person or whatever, let's say they broke up with you. Not only do I miss this person so much and want to contact them, but I'm also upset that I was so confident that I had got over the breakup and it just turns out that I had it. That can really mess with you. And so just know that for two weeks, you cannot trust yourself to be out of shock. There will be emotional turbulence. I'm actually going to come out and say that for those two weeks, distraction can be powerful. Okay. If you have games that you like to play or whatever, typically on my channel, I talk about avoiding gaming where you can. I don't think it has much place in a really ambitious guy's life. Of course, here and there when you're hanging out with your friends or whatever, maybe you do it here and there to relax. But in general, I don't think it has much of a place. When you're going through a breakup, I think it's okay to distract yourself with those kind of cheap forms of dopamine, at least for the first couple of days, because you're going through so much pain that you're not going to be productive either way. But at the later part of those two weeks, and especially after those two weeks, what you want to do is have a regular routine. Now, there are things if you watch this channel that you know are good for you, no matter what state you're in. It's good to work out. It's good to meditate. It's good to eat well. It's good to see friends, etc. etc. I would also add to that, of course, it's good to have a purpose. And if you're building a business to work on that, th those sorts of things. Now, the point is that emotionally, it's going to be hard to do. You might not have that much motivation to actually go ahead and do these things, but this is where your discipline is going to have to kick in. This is where being strong actually kicks in. Being strong does not mean not feeling your emotions. That's not what it means. It just means that despite your emotions, you take the actions that you know you should take anyway. And so what does that look like? That looks like having a regular routine again. You get up and you work out, even if that's 15, 20 minutes, you get up and you meditate, even if that's 15, 20 minutes minutes. No matter what it is, you need to do the things that you know in any circumstance will contribute to you feeling good or at least feeling better. Now to have a routine that really helps you and really serves you, especially in this time, you want to make the good things easy and make the bad things hard. So what I mean by that is really set up your life so that it's easier to get to the gym than it's ever been. Make sure that your nighttime routine consists of setting out your gym clothes for the next morning. Okay. Same thing with making the bad things hard. Maybe you do want to delete those pictures. I said earlier, you didn't have to, and you don't have to, but maybe you do. Maybe you do want to make it hard to do the things that are going to bring you back to the position that you're trying to get out of, the one where you're hurting and you miss this person. Now, one good way to make the bad things hard is social accountability. Tell your friends, I'm not going back to this person. I've made this decision. I'm leaving. Either they decided to break up with you or you broke up with them. But in both cases, you're not going to reach out to them. You're doing no contact. You're not going to talk to them for at least a year and commit that to your friends so that they hold that as part of your reputation. So if you do go and do that, you go back on that, they're not going to be too happy. And that might just dissuade you from doing it. Now, another thing
thing that I encourage you to do right out of the gate when the breakup happens is make a why list. Okay, that means basically I want you to have a list ideally on your phone so it can be accessed at any time of day whenever you need it, a list of the reasons why you decided to leave and why you're not going back. In the case that you decided to leave, it's gonna be a little bit easier because you might have been able to think about these reasons before you made the decision to go. But in the case that, you know, maybe you were broken up with or cheated on or whatever it is, you still need a list of the reasons why you're not going to go back and what lies ahead for you if you don't go back. For me personally, this list consisted of the things that I thought were incompatible in the long term, but primarily it actually consisted of the things that I wanted to do with my future that led to those incompatibilities. And that could be time constraints or personality differences. It could be several different things, but your why list should just be a thing that whenever you think of any reason where you're like, oh wow, I'm glad I'm not in this situation, or here are the advantages to not being in that situation, put that on the list. And then whenever you're feeling like, you know, I just wanna look at a picture of her, maybe I should give her a call, maybe et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe I should answer a text message she sent me. Whatever that is, you open that why list and it will remind you, it'll bring you back to that frame of mind that you were in when you were really hurting, no matter how long it's been. I found it incredibly helpful for those first two weeks and maybe up to the the first couple of months but to be honest with you even beyond that i've consulted it once or twice and i know you will too because it can just be so helpful to restore that frame of mind that gave you the clarity of why you left now i touched on this a little bit earlier but the other thing is friends i know it can be kind of difficult for a guy to open up to his friends and say hey man like i'm really hurting i'm having a hard time but i had a friend who did that with me the other day and i know he felt way better by talking about it and i did the same thing where i talked to my friends about having a hard time when i was going through a hard time if there's one major piece of advice socially that i could give you in this video is that that's what your friends are for they want you to feel good. They want you to feel better. And it's so nice to offer them that sort of continuity where they've seen you at your best and they've seen you at your worst. And so they can begin to really give you advice as you move forward in your life because they've seen the whole spectrum of who you can be. And so it's really an investment in your long-term relationship with the people that you want to keep around, that you're honest and open with them about the way you feel. And what you'll find to start is it is super cathartic just to admit the way you feel about things. But beyond that, they might actually have super practical advice. After all, these people presumably love you and care for you. And so they're going to give you the kinds of advice that they think might help you get through the hard situation. And so opening up to your friends at this time, ideally as soon as possible is the best solution. Today, I've given you what I consider to be a breakup action plan, regardless as to whether if you left or they left, but there is one kind of bit of optimism that I want to leave you with. And that is that after this two week period, and I place a lot of weight on that two week period, after the two week period, the reason why things change so much is because you begin to truly recognize that every day is a little better. Okay. I think you really fluctuate. Like I said, there's that turbulence in those first two weeks where you feel good, you feel bad, you feel good, you feel bad. There's all this shock. But after that two weeks, is really where most days you feel like even if it's super small progress, it's progress nonetheless towards a happier, better next chapter of your life. And so in summary, what I would say is for the first two weeks, you really want to fight and use these tactics that I told you about, which is no contact. Absolutely. That's going to happen for a long time. Use the why list to remind you, rely on your friends. These are things that are so powerful. Do whatever you have to do. Even like I said earlier, even take some of those distractions for those first two weeks that you need to do before you really get into that routine. Because after that first two weeks, you're going to make that progress and you're going to be so happy if you've already manage to pick up those good habits because you're going to then launch into the time that you're beginning to feel better anyway and feel way better because you're like, wow, I've been consistent at the gym for the last two weeks. I've been consistent meditating. I've been consistent eating well, all these things. And so when you eventually do get to a point where you feel back to normal, you actually feel beyond normal. You feel fantastic because you've taken this strong emotion and you've transmuted it into this motivation to take action. A strange thing really happened to me. I'll admit a strange thing happened to me once I was fully over my breakup. I began to miss it. I don't just mean miss the person. And of course, I have huge respect for that person. I have huge respect for everyone I've dated, but especially this last person that I dated, you know, I have huge respect for her. But what I will say is that what I miss, one of the things I miss most of all was the breakup. I realized how powerful that emotion was now. And now that I can give you guys this kind of action plan, I know that if I ever go through this sort of thing again, that I'm going to use this because it's weirdly enough, it can be a superpower. Having that level of emotionality can really motivate you to do great things. And so I give you this list with the encouragement that you use it and that you recognize that for those first two weeks, it will be hard. You will be in shock. You will be up and down. But after that, things will begin to get better and better and better and better as long as you begin to use the tools that I suggest to you. Get closer with your friends, take good steps towards good habits, and um, you'll get through it. You're going to be okay. So I just want to leave you with that message because I know it might be really hard right now, but fight tooth and nail to get to those two weeks. And then after that, you'll see that things will begin to get better. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Spencer with Must Become. Always remember that your potential is your obligation. And so what you can become, you must become.